We have Madden 21 Decroft versus Young Kiv in the Seahawks Club Championship. This is a... Uh, this is one of the best games of the year, and it starts out with a very bad interception. Uh, this is one of those things where this sucks. This sucks when it happens because it sucks. It's such a, like, ah, uh, Decroft has good pocket here and steps up, right? Like, this is good. This is good. This is what you want to do. But he steps too far. So now the buttons are gone. He's basically, he's past the line of scrimmage to the point where he can't slide yet, but he can still throw it, but he can't actually throw it. It's a flag. And then when you do this, it becomes a lob pass no matter what. So it's a lob pass. It's able to get picked off pretty easily. And I believe Young Kid's going to take this back for a cool six. No, he gets tackled right there. Okay. Not a great start on the first play. That's good That's good for uh, Mr. Kim. This is a game I worked pretty closely with Decroft. Um, and the rest of the GNC did too. Uh, preparing for this game against Young Kiv. Me and Decroft ran the same bunch defense in clubs. I ended up, unfortunately, losing to Clef about a month before this. Uh, so I lost to Clef in the final in the final four Bucks club this year, which happened a month before the championships happened, basically. So Decroft's in the championship. I don't know who he played at all to get here, but regardless, Kiv in a really good spot. We're going to see Decroft come out, and I believe Big Nickel over G. He does. Is he going to hop on a safety, get right in the middle? He is. Oh, I remember this defense so much. And I would not be surprised if this style of defense maybe came back this year. Maybe. Who knows? Let's see. Going for the gap shoot. Able to get a stop right there. Okay. Holds the door for a gain of just one. All right. I like to see that. Let's do a little skip ahead of Ruski. Second and goal. Still in the eye tight for Young Kiv. This is a spot where I'm still running the ball right here. Able to get another blew it up in the backfield for a loss of six or a loss of three right there. So we're on third and goal from the six. Let's go third and goal. Bunch left. We have Brett Favre back there. Everybody used Brett Favre at this time because of the really quick release. And we're going to another run right here. Oh, this run sucks. I think it gets blown up, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure this run gets blown up. No? Yeah, it was a... Yeah, it was a... a I, don't, I don't know why. I remember I remember watching him call that and like live and be like, I don't think that's a very good run. Huh. Uh, yeah, so Decrop ends up minimizing the damage of holding him to three, which is such a big deal when you make an early mistake. And now, you see, a lot of these passers... When they're on the middle hash, so if you take a touchback after a kick return, a lot of these pure passers are going to try running the ball on first down just so they're able to get to the left or right hash. A lot of pass plays are very hash dependent. Um, and you see D-Cross always going to have his trips. He's in gun Y off trips pats, which is also known as U-trips. And he's always going to have his trips of the formation to the wide side. So get on a hash lets him do that. Motion right to left. A lot of motion. A lot of uh, almost like deception in this... Uh, in this offense from Decroft, literally just because uh, with those motions, if you're unfamiliar with the offense, they all look the same, and you really never know what's coming. Decroft, one of the best pocket passers in the game. You saw that attacking with that out route right there from the tight end. Really, the key in U-Trips, there's a few cool things with this, right? This tight end's really lethal. There's a zig route out of him, um, and then just putting him on an out route even is really, really effective. He's able to get into a pocket right here. Uh, the running back has a nice little wheel route, and then this receiver, number 11 right here, is actually in the slot. So he could go on hitches, he can go on flats, um, and that ends up being something that plays a significant role in Decroft's offense, along with the fact that you'll see this motion over a lot. And I mean, you're going to see this very, the same motion lead to different plays consistently. Has A, launches A, and immediately, just like that, Decroft able to get almost into the end zone. And I mean, that's just, just Decroft reading the coverage or knowing pre snap what the coverage is going to be, able to attack with a bomb. That's why you want to lab bombs and be able to attack coverages with them. They're so they're so lethal. U-Trips used to have so many bombs in Madden 21, Madden 20. It felt like in 22, it really didn't have any bombs. And I'm a big I'm a big advocate of whenever uh, whenever you have an offense, you really want that offense to be lethal at attacking downfield in big chunk plays. Now you don't always need a bunch of bombs, but you need to have a bomb or so. Just because, I mean, it's it's unrealistic to tell for Decroft in this game to go into it saying, oh, I'm going to pass for four yards every single time, every single time, right? You got to be able to not get, not get an easy drive, but, you know, get some big yardage. You know, make, make the game easier on yourself. Make yourself not to work as hard. And that's what a bomb does. We're going to see, though, if Kim's able to get a stop right here, he's still in a good spot. But, I mean, already you see Decroft being able to hold him to that three is such a, is such a big deal. And then we get the third and goal from the three now for the D Croft. He's going to go on. Did he just go on conservative or he just changed his ball carrier? I, he might have just went on. I think he just. 
I think he went on conservative, but he should be on aggressive. Right? I, 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 maybe I just thought I saw it wrong. Whatever. Still in the eye tight. Let's go a little power O going all the way to the outside. I, 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 I hate those play calls. Decroft, he was an aggressive. In that situation, Decroft's in a spot where it's really hard to get a pass play from this area. Uh, third and goal from the three. Although I am... Uh, I'm, the reason I hate this play call, the reason I don't like it, okay, is because when Decroft snaps this ball right here, he is just praying that Kiv does not shoot this gap. And, and Decroft knows this too. We've had this, we, we, we've talked about this a lot. This is not a slight to Daniel at all. But he's basically just praying, hey, I hope, De I hope Kiv can't shoot this gap. Or, or I hope Kiv doesn't get a lucky shed or something like that, right? And he actually... Good stick from Decroft, but if this guy just sheds a little bit differently, it's a tackle. This guy comes through, makes a tackle. Regardless, so Decroft able to take a quick 7-3 lead, and he's already back in the driver's seat after a bad start, uh, which is a big testament to how well Decroft plays throughout this entire game. Kid with the ball, bunch to the left side, and you'll see him flip it to the right whenever you see his gun bunch of guys. Whenever you're in a tight formation, it's always advantageous to, uh, to oh gosh, I forgot that was, an, I forgot that was something. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh. Yeah. Let's. Let's take a look at what just happened right here, boys. So I forgot this was a thing. Decroft's users right here. Decroft's going to scream off this left edge and strip the ball from Brett Favre, the Wrangler jeans man. He has strip specials on his user. This was something that we had done. Uh, something that I, actually I tried doing as well. I just didn't get a chance to do it in my club game. Uh, Blocky had done it. It was something that was kind of a TNC thing at that time. It was. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Um, really, it's actually insane to think that Decroft threw a pick. I mean, a pick three on his first play, and I mean, it looked like a pick six too. He got a barely got a tackle, a shoestring tackle at the three yard line that held it to three. And now he's up two possessions. Kiv though trying to move the ball now. A good, good little gain of eight right there to the tight end with the air truck up. You're gonna see some air trucking when they're open the field uh, quite a bit back in here. Back Madden 21, air trucking was a big deal. I'm curious. Spinning in the beta got nerfed. So spinning was the meta man 22. Man 21 spinning was really good, so it was air trucking. Man 20 or man 21 spinning was really good, so it was air trucking. Man 22 spinning was definitely the best, although air trucking was still good. I'm wondering what because there's always a ball carrier move that's really good. I'm very curious what that will be uh come this come this game. I don't think juking to me has never been good. I've always felt like juking, you're just trying to line yourself up for a hit stick. Um, whereas spinning, you're very you know, spinning. You're able to kind of like slide right off of people, and then air trucking, you're really able like to speed burst. Juking always felt like a, a move where I was like, I feel like I'm trying to fumble right now. So I'd be surprised to see that, and then hurdling, I'd be surprised. So I guess I'm curious if uh, trucking makes a comeback right here. You see, Kiv though starting to methodically work down the field, starting to get into as much of a rhythm as he can. I mean, he's kind of so what like if you're Kiv after the first play, you're like, oh. I just won the, like, you haven't won the game, obviously, but you are in the best situation ever, and this should be a cool-ass game where a little mistake like that makes the biggest difference. And instead, um, Kiv finds himself down a quick 11. He does get ball at half, so if he's able to score right here, um, you know, and you see Decroft right there even with the user rush. But let's look at this again. Decroft trying to get, so actually the rule here, Decroft actually messes up. Uh... He, as soon as the halfback blocks, he should just go back to user. Decroft ends up getting over aggressive going. Uh, and he actually has B. RB is open as well with the low ball uh, hitch route, possession catch. That's the thing that's always in the game with these hitches. Let's skip over to the second quarter. Thank you, MCS YouTube, for having these things broken down very easily for me. We're going, what, flood left right here? Nice little check down again. Just hitting the flats consistently. That's something that Decroft's going to start taking away on that side. Kiv, I mean, the thing is for Kiv, like, this game really does do a good job of demonstrating both how quickly a game can swing and then also the potential for one. Again, I, I can't over over emphasize the fact that Decroft literally lost the game on the first play. Then within five minutes of real, like, real life time, took an 11-point lead. If Decroft gets a stop this drive... Now he probably wins the game. If Kiv scores this drive, he's in a good spot because he gets ball at half. It's just a weird, a weird, weird, weird thing. Able to throw at, oh, did he get a pick? Oh, oh no, he caught it. Oh gosh. I apologize for the low quality of this, by the way. Blame the MCS 
Uh, electronic Arts it is worth multi-billions of dollars, but they do have to upload in 540p. You have to respect that, man. Make it look homemade, make it look real authentic to the user. I really appreciate Electronic Arts. Again, we get that flip from the bunch. I mean, that's going to be such a popular thing. Oh, was able to hit that flat quickly. And then we get an air truck leading to an actual truck. Kiv gets down to the five. Last time, remember, he was with the, he was on the three and got stopped. Decross sipping water out of a glass. Um, but you saw last time, Kiv got down to the five. I, I, I really expected, I don't know. Kiv just ran the ran three, three runs. I don't know. I feel like going into the... Like, yeah, I just I get I can't remember how much this how this game played a ton anymore, but I mean yeah, there's a gap shoot from Decroft, and I I believe they knew we had this gap shoot too. I don't know. Um, I really I, I'm a big believer in having really good red zone plays and really trying to, especially for like a tournament game like this where you know it's gonna be important. And I'm surprised Kiv. I don't want to say he's unprepared, but I mean it feels like he is. Um, but again, I can't remember totally how this game played, so I might be missing something. Kiv's one of usually one of the better players in the game. Ooh, Decrop nearly getting a pick right there. Jeez, yeah, Kiv just. I don't know, man, because yeah, that, it's just such a so weird that he wouldn't have like a really good bunch play, especially from where he is right now on the what the six, the seven. Really surprising he doesn't have a good bunch play. He's not totally on a hash, but I mean he's on the right side of the field. Um, okay, so we have bunch here. Even like trying to, I don't know, trying to quick throw the flats. I don't know. Um, something. I I'm surprised. Decroft calls a timeout. That's an important thing. If your defense is not set up on a big play, even if it's in the first hash, let's call a timeout. Don't try rushing. Don't try. Let's call a timeout. Say, hey, timeout. Uh, there's no reason never to do that, especially in the situation Decroft's in. And that goes for you guys, whether you're in weekend league, head to head, playing a buddy, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, really, yeah, literally whatever it might be. Decroft sends to good defense, has the high ball, throws the high ball. He had the high ball like a split second earlier. That throw right there is kind of scary. And Kiv's annoyed. He seems very annoyed, it appears. He's not happy. I wonder what kind of gum he's chewing. Probably strawberry. Try like a trident layer strawberry. Regardless, he's kicking three going up or going, cutting it down to eight. Which means that Decroft has a chance to actually take a two possession lead again. Sat comes through. Decroft's going to run this down to the two minute warning. Second and 19. Good pressure from, from Kiv right there. I'm just surprised to see Decroft snap the ball. Yeah, he didn't. And we're going to see the same motion. A very basic flood concept on the right. And we're going to throw the check down. You see how good both of these players are at hitting their check downs underneath. And a lot of people, the, the first progression is they never make the, or the first like stage of a passer is that you really don't ever throw your check downs. The second stage of passer is that you throw your check downs kind of late. And then the third is you really are able to hit those check downs early into a play. And that's what you're seeing here consistently. Right there, that was a drag that just passed the tackle that he was able to hit and then air truck up with. A lot of people are throwing that on the sideline, which minimizes your rack. And is, I mean, it's a difference between a decent amount of yards. Has RB, can't throw it though. I'm curious, does, does Decroft go for this? I believe he's gonna, ooh. Ooh, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> oh, this is so nasty. I actually feel bad for Kiv. I forgot that th this has to be one of the most replayed parts, right? Yep. Oh no. I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Kiv kind of... It's not him getting cheated, but it's like, huh. I don't really know how you would have known. I mean, he got strip sacked, right? And then this happens, which is... Yeah. 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 Kiv, uh, oh, my gosh. Look at... So, this deep middle third just, just stops. It was, it was a middle third glitch in Madden 21... Uh, became popular as the year went on, but uh, TNC had it first. Uh, very annoying when when, a, when somebody has that. And it's like, if you're Kiv, it's like... What do you, I, see, that, that's one of the reasons I don't like Knowledge Gap. Because in, in that in that play, in, in my opinion, Decroft did not outplay Kiv. He, he didn't. He didn't do anything special. Um, but Decroft knew a little bit more about the game than Kiv did. And that's what the difference is. I I will stand by that. I really don't love that playing that drastic of a factor in the game. Um, I mean, realistically, I mean, he got bagged three plays in a row. Or he didn't get bagged. But I mean, a fourth and ten, it's going to be hard for you to convert. And you probably have to either you probably have to punt if you don't have that. And then he's just able to do that. Decroft, though, now I'm surprised he doesn't go on. Okay, he does go on conservative. Uh, he's, he has a chance really to run the ball 
two more times, kick three, and go into the half up 17-6. Kiv does get ball, so I mean, he can't, Kiv can't totally check out of this game. But you gotta think, Kiv could argue he's had two possessions taken away from him. The fourth and 10, which he's probably arguing that he gets a stop on. And then on his drive that he got strip sacked on, he, I mean, again, it's neither of those are cheats, but it's like, how do you even, how do you even prepare for that? Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you can't even get mad. You, it's just whatever. Yeah, he's on good service still. Third and eight. I'm guessing he's gonna, he is gonna pass the ball here. I would guess, but I would expect him honestly to just eat a sack. I'd be very surprised if Decroft threw anything that wasn't wide open right here, just because that extra 30 seconds running off the clock is such an important thing for clock management. And he might honestly just run the ball. Uh, we'll see if he does. Yeah, he's gonna let that clock tick all the way down to one and then snap. Oh, he calls a timeout right there. Um, yeah, is he gonna, uh, does he run the ball right here? This, this isn't a big play, I'm just gonna skip ahead. Yeah, okay, yeah, he takes the set. So he ends up, so he does call a pass play. Basically looking, if anything's wide open, he'll throw it. If not, he's just gonna go down, just gonna go down, just gonna go down, perfect. And a big thing there, it runs a lot of clock right there. He just ran about six, seven seconds. A normal run play would only run about three, four seconds, which again, for Kiv trying to make a desperation end of half, getting a field goal range or something, is a big deal. We're gonna take this into the third quarter now though. Uh, and yeah, Kiv with the ball, gets down to the 46 yard line. I mean, he's nine, nine for 11, he has 106 yards. He's t he is looking decent on offense, taking check downs. Uh, but I mean, you gotta assume he's beyond frustrated and it's like, yeah, what are you gonna do? And that's, again, that's a, uh, that, having knowledge like that is is such a big deal in the game uh and it's one of the biggest prices you'll pay if you try playing comp without putting any time in and if you don't know some of the right people honestly uh, i obviously left tnc um nearly a year ago and now every time i play a tournament it's something I, I constantly think about is do these guys have a glitch because i put i knew these glitches when they happened that i would never want to play against them so it's like you know what i'm in uh, obviously, you know, it's a risk reward that I took, uh, to leaving, but you know, it's something I think about and it could easily and probably will backfire on me at some point where I'll lose to them because, I, because they glitched me or I'll lose a game that I would have won had I had a glitch that they, that they knew that I just don't know now. Um, keep moving the ball though, hitting the tight end corner out. Going, is he going back to, going to flood now? Okay. Let's see flood, a little flip Ruski. Decraw has to flip quickly. Not able to get back into the show blitz. Let's see, send five. And Kiv, nice laser beam right there. Good dot, Kiv. So Kiv feeling himself now. Let's see what happened right there on the coverage. Oh, this is outside quarter, I believe. And it just glitched out. I go for two. Oh, I guess he didn't mean to. Okay, sure. Yeah, so Decrop, second and 10. Ah, uh, geez. He's, Kiv's back in the game now. That was Decroft obviously has a good amount of breathing room. Decroft can even get stopped, and then he can still win the game because the stop score. Uh, if he gets stopped, Kiv scores. He'll have a money drive, basically. But this is a pressure situation for Decroft. You know, you don't want to blow this. You've had a good lead most of this game. And not only that, like, yeah, there's the air trucking right there. Jeez. Not only have you had a lead most of this game, you've already battled back, again, from really tough adversity to begin with. I think that's super... A lot of people immediately would say that they lost the game right there uh, off of that immediate pick. And it, it was kind of a, it, it was a little unfortunate. Has a, throws a, able to get that. And again, a lot of people are making that read just to split. I want to emphasize this, man. I really do. A lot of people, let's back up to about right here. A lot of people are making this read just a second too late, right? A lot of people are throwing this when he catches it on the sideline, even a half second. And that takes it from, you know, a third, uh, or that takes it from whatever he gets right here, a first down to being a fourth and three. Fourth and three, you get stopped. Now you're in a position to lose the game. That's just something that some of these next level passers are able to do. It comes down to lit literal milliseconds. Like, it it's what it comes down to. Um, it's super, super, super rapid response time in between like recognizing it with your brain, your eyes, and hitting the freaking button and hitting the correct button each and every time. That motion always looking the same. I think is it, he's going for the bomb again. Uh, this is a slightly different bomb. Uh, I don't, was that a bomb? I don't know. Eats a sack though. Actually, I didn't love that play. I can't remember. That post didn't look like a bomb. Huh. I don't remember that. It, it, uh, Decrop it was pretty pretty uh, purposeful with this play call. So I'm, I'm sure there was a reason behind it, but I'm not sure. 
Second and 16. Now, this is Kiv's a, a big opportunity for Kiv to get a stop. Kiv sitting in the 55 wide. And he gets middle third glitched again. Oh, man. Ah. I, I feel bad for Kiv, dude. I'm not even friends with Kiv. Like, because what do you do? I mean, second to 16, you playing good defense. Like, just your middle third gets glitched. And the thing is, that's just the second time it's happened. So you you don't, after that happens the first time, you you I mean, you don't even know what happened because you don't even have a replay of it, mind you. You know what I mean? It's not like Kiv had a replay to see his middle third. He easily could have thought, oh, I messed up. I made the wrong adjustment. My middle third didn't play anything. Right there, it's like, I mean, you, you don't, you know what I mean? You don't even know. You could have thought it was fluke. Um, you, you have no idea. Yeah, first and goal from the 10 doing, man, was red zone this, this hard in this game? Maybe it was. I'm just not remembering it right. I'm so surprised to see them immediately. Yeah, I mean, Kiv shoots in the backfield. Decroft needs to get seven here. That is so important. Three, and Kiv still has a good chance at just tying this game up, and Decroft might have a money drive, or it goes into OT where you can lose. I am so surprised that Decroft immediately ran power O. That is so surprising because D Kiv, besides the one run that Decroft had where he had to break it way outside, he had to bend it way out, I, he hasn't even really been that successful. Uh, yeah, I, I like this style of play call way better, especially how uh, how effective your um, your air trucks are. Just we don't trying to get it down to the flat or something. Able to get a check down right there. Yeah, good. Yeah, he's able to get in. Oh man, I I hate that power O call, man. I really do. That's so odd. This is kind of a scary throw, but uh, able to get him. We'll go to the fourth quarter here. Kiv on third and ten, running double post. Decroft sending two. That's such a high level read, man. I wish the quality wasn't bad because that's a high level read right there. Watch this C route. Watch this C route, man. Just barely open. Jeez. And the out of bounds is so important, too. That's that, that's a super high level read. And I, I know it, too, because I ran this exact same defense and nearly, a day, day near nobody made that read. Because, I mean, it is open, but damn, is it tough. Like, it's tough to see that, especially in a high level game like this. Kiv accidentally makes too many audibles. And, I, geez, that's a that's kind of like a frustration mistake. Almost like you're just really annoyed and not totally paying attention. And, I mean, again, like, to me, <laughs> Kiv's, Kiv's, like, he's, he's not having a, it's not been easy for him, uh, certainly. Good read right there. Good little check down. That's important to me. Make sure you're still taking those check downs in this, these types of situations. 15 for 17 for 199. I mean, he's passing the ball well. He has the turnover from the strip fumble. The red zone's killing him, though, I will say. That's one thing you can, you really can't afford to uh, have bad red zone like that. And I think, what, two field goals he's had now? It, both in field goal or both inside the red zone, I believe. Like, that that does come back to bite you. That's why red zone is so important. Red zone offense is so important because you need to score. And red zone defense is so important because it keeps you in the game. You got to think if, let's say, for example, Kiv scores a touchdown um, each time instead of a field goal, the times he got a field goal, right? He has 21. And he's going for a game-winning drive right here. Instead, playing behind. And not only that, it's a psychological factor of if he, if Decrop lets up a touchdown right after that initial pick, oh, that's not good. But holding to a field goal, okay, okay. Yeah, Kiv even has Omaha activated, able to take that check down right there. He's gonna go turbo, I'm sure. Kiv looking for a corner out, has the corner out, throws the corner out, gets the corner out, and he gets it out of bounds. All right, I mean, he's got a okay. No way he goes down to I four. Man, I am I am shocked. If, what a man! I'm surprised he doesn't. Okay, he's in bunch now. How? I I, I guess I gotta remember how this game played. Man, I really don't. God, I just am expecting him to uh, to to just have a couple of better. Play. Yeah, calling mesh post is what I expected. Because this isn't a game, yeah, yeah, like this type of play. This is what I kind of expected more of. And throws the right to Palamalu. And this, yeah, Palamalu's out. Decross flipping. Oh, man. All right. So there's actually a little bit to this. So Decroft comes screaming off this edge. Forces Kiv to kind of, I mean, this is a scary thing when you are you have a user coming off the edge. So forces Kiv to make the bad read. Palamalu. Gets it. And Decroft seals the deal right there. Jeez. 
Wow. I'm curious what some of the uh, what some of the comments say on this. Yeah, I mean, this is game right here. I think, yeah. Yeah, super game. Uh, not only dude spazzing. Calm this. Decroft makes him want to slap him. Jesus. Yep. Yep. Decroft was glitching. Kiv's middle third with a post going to the middle. Yep. No, um... We got running back cooking corners on routes. Oh, people just bitching. All right, I can't read any more of this. People just bitching. No, um, geez, I, I remember this game, dude. I remember watching this game live. All right, boys, subscribe.